Let's take a look at some of the other divisions of the nervous system, like the somatic and the autonomic. Now, remember that the somatic division of the nervous system is all about skeletal muscle right there. For the most part, that is under your conscious voluntary control, but there are a few exceptions to that rule. And you've seen back in previous videos, acetylcholine binding to these receptor sites on the cell membranes of skeletal muscle cells, opening up sodium channels, generating action potentials, and of course causing muscle contraction. But primarily what we want to look at in this video here is the autonomic nervous system. When you hear autonomic, think automatic, because that is what this division of the nervous system controls. All the many things inside of you which happen automatically. And if you look at all the organs and structures in your body, Almost all of that is happening automatically. This autonomic division controls all these important functions of homeostasis inside of you. That frees up your mind for whatever it is you need to do at the moment and takes all this other out of it. So think about some of these things this autonomic division would need to control. Smooth muscle and cardiac muscle are some big examples right there. How could you ever think about anything if you had to constantly think about your heart rate, or the contraction of smooth muscle in your intestines, or many other places such as that. But we're going to see some very common abundant neurotransmitters like acetylcholine and norepinephrine used in this autonomic division. Now the autonomic division has three divisions itself, the sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric. The sympathetic division is what's also called the fight or flight division. Think about all the changes that happen in your body when you get physically active. The neurons in this division are responsible for those changes. The parasympathetic division is also called the rest and relaxation division because these neurons tend to be more active when you're sitting, resting, eating, sleeping, and things such as that. And then the enteric division of this autonomic nervous system is located inside of your digestive system. And that's a huge number of neurons because there are more organs in that digestive system than any other. So you're going to see that this sympathetic and parasympathetic division tend to connect to just about anything and everything in the body, but you'll see that they tend to have opposite functions. You know what the sympathetic does to something? The parasympathetic usually does exactly the opposite. But again, that enteric division is inside of the digestive system. And what digestive system primarily is, is glands and smooth muscle. So that's really what that enteric division is controlling. Looking at that inside that wall of the digestive tract, there'll be lots of sensory neurons. That way this autonomic division knows what's happening when and how. There'll be many motor neurons connecting to things like muscle and glands, controlling all that without your conscious thought, which is exactly what you need. But when you look back at all these sympathetic neurons and their axons and the routes they take, you'll see some traveling through spinal nerves, some through sympathetic nerves, some through splanchnic nerves, and others innervating the adrenal glands. If you look at the adrenal glands, they sit right on top of your kidneys. And one part of the adrenal glands is called the adrenal medulla, and that is a large production site for epinephrine and norepinephrine. But look at the distribution of these sympathetic fibers here and some of the things they do. Through spinal nerves, you'll see them controlling blood vessels, right? Constriction and dilation, sending less or more blood to things like skeletal muscle, skin and the erector pili muscles also. In the head and neck nerve plexus, you see some of the same things happening there. But in the thoracic plexus, here you have axons leading out to heart and lungs. Again, controlling heart rate and breathing are very important. Also, you think about the diaphragm muscle, which is very much involved with breathing. That right there often is autonomically controlled, but of course you can control it with your conscious thought to a certain degree. You look at the abdominal pelvic nerve plexus. Here you see things going out, organs, nerves going out to abdominal pelvic cavity organs. And again, that's a large part of your abdomen right there. There's so many structures in there, lots of organs that these nerves are connected to. But go back to that sympathetic division. Again, this is the fight or flight division. Think about what you want to happen when you get physically active. Primarily, you want to see an increase in activity of your heart, your lungs, your breathing, that is, and also blood flow to skeletal muscles. Because when you get physically active, you definitely need that heart to beat faster and harder to pump more blood. You need those lungs to move more air in and out so you get better gas exchange at the same time. And you want to see a big increase in blood flow to skeletal muscle. 
at the same time send more blood to the heart and to the lungs and of course you'll move more blood and you get more gas exchange in the lungs that's what you really need to see happening at the same time you'll relax the smooth muscle in the air passageways that dilation will open them up the more air you move the more gases you're going to swap it will tell things like your uh, adipocytes your fat cells and your liver which is where you've got stored up energy to release stored energy. That's what you need to happen when you're physically active. And of course, when you get active and your body temperature rises, sweat glands tend to get more active at the same time, working to cool you off. But look at the distribution of parasympathetic fibers here. You look at these axons and nerves, you'll see some of these traveling out through the cranial nerves, like numbers three, seven, and nine through the vagus nerve and thoracic plexus. You'll see connections to the heart, lungs, and esophagus. Again, parasympathetic division is gonna slow these down, where sympathetic did exactly the opposite. And the abdominal pelvic nerve plexus. Here you'll see parts of the vagus nerve connecting to stomach and other visceral organs. That means all those organs you think of as your guts. And through this pelvic splanctic nerves, you're gonna see connections to the colon, urinary bladder, and reproductive organs. But looking at the physiology of this autonomic nervous system, there are some very common abundant neurotransmitters being used like acetylcholine and norepinephrine. The acetylcholine is released by cholinergic neurons. Notice how you kind of see choline in the name. So you'll always know that cholinergic neurons release acetylcholine. Adrenergic neurons release the epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, Adrenaline is the old word for those chemicals. So that's how you can remember the adrenergic adrenaline going with things like epinephrine and norepinephrine, which work with that sympathetic division. Again, those are the chemicals you need to see being released when you do get physically active. But when you look at the cells and the protein receptor sites that these chemicals bind to, with the cholinergic, which again binds with the acetylcholine, there's two different cholinergic receptors, <clears throat> a nicotinic and a muscarinic. The nicotinic are found on skeletal muscle cells and adrenal glands, where the muscarinic are found on sweat glands. And then you get to the adrenergic. Again, epinephrine and norepinephrine bind to the adrenergic receptors, where there are four different types of adrenergic receptors, alpha-1 and 2, beta-1 and 2. You may have heard of some of these like the beta-1 receptor sites, which are only found on the heart. Well, think about this. If these protein receptor sites let epinephrine and norepinephrine bind to them, think about what those chemicals do. They make your heart beat faster and harder. You look at blood pressure medications, some of them are called beta blockers. Well, if they block these chemicals, they'll do just the opposite. And of course, that'll work to lower your blood pressure. And then looking at some of the functional generalizations of the autonomic nervous system, remember that sympathetic and parasympathetic tend to have opposite effects, where the sympathetic will make your heart beat faster and harder, parasympathetic does just the opposite, slows it down, where the sympathetic will send more blood to heart, lungs, and skeletal muscle, parasympathetic does exactly the opposite right there. So you tend to get the two of them working together, but again, remember that sympathetic is also called the fight or flight, where the parasympathetic is also called the rest or relaxation. And again, that rest or relaxation is active when you're sitting, you are resting, you are sleeping, you're eating, and things such as that right there.